So my name's Sharon Lewin, I'm Head of the Department of Infectious Diseases at Monash University and Head of the Infectious Diseases Unit at Alfred Health and Co-Head for the Centre for Biomedical Research at the Burnett Institute here in Melbourne, Australia. And I'm the local co-chair for the 20th International AIDS Conference that will be held in Melbourne July 20th to 25th 2014. And the International AIDS Conference is the biggest conference on HIV. In fact, it's one of the biggest medical conferences, will be the biggest medical conference ever held in Australia that will be coming to Melbourne next year. We're expecting about 18,000 delegates. Um, the conference is unique because it attracts scientists, clinicians, policy makers, advocates, politicians and community members. So it's a very diverse multidisciplinary conference that historically has had a major impact on many aspects of the HIV epidemic. I'll be co-chairing the conference with Professor Francoise Barrasinoussi and Professor Barrasinoussi won the Nobel Prize in 2008 for the discovery of HIV. She discovered HIV in 1983, 30 years ago, so it will be really a great honour and pleasure to be co-chairing it with a woman of such enormous scientific impact. So I'm co-chair of the conference. The conference is a very large, complex organisation, as I'm sure you can imagine when you're trying to, um, when you're when you're hosting 18,000 people. The conference has three major programs: a scientific program, a leadership program, and a community program. And the conference coordinating committee encompasses all of the people that will guide those three programs, as well as international organisations that are key in fighting the HIV epidemic which includes the International AIDS Society and UNAIDS and other members of the United Nations um, group of um, uh, institutes. Added to that, we have civil society members or, or, or representation from affected communities. We have youth representatives. We have um, uh, our partners within Australia and the region. One of our key Australian partners in the conference will be AusAid, a major funder for Australia's international health programs, as well as the Australasian Society for HIV Medicine, the lead scientific agency that that um, represents all HIV all professionals that work in the HIV arena, and NAPRA, the National Association of People Living with HIV AIDS. And there are three main local partners. The conference, although based in Australia, is an international conference, but we hope it will be an opportunity to showcase many of Australia's success stories in managing the epidemic as well as many challenges that we face. It will also be the first time in 10 years that the conference has been in the Asia Pacific region. So there's a very strong um, interest for us to also work very closely with our regional partners. But just to give you a taste and uh, of the sort of people that attend these conferences, last year it was in Washington um, and uh, at that conference was Bill Gates and Bill Clinton um, uh, Elton John, a range of different celebrities that have sort of put their names behind HIV and we're, we're hoping we're going to attract that same high level commitment because the real success of this conference, this conference historically has of course been high level science that we will hope to um, showcase at the conference but the profile and political will so we're very hopeful we'll have the Prime Minister we will definitely have the Minister of Health um, uh, both local Minister David Davis who's been played a key role in supporting the conference the Commonwealth Health Minister we've got a whole lot of really interesting political events planned such as perhaps hosting a regional conference for all health ministers hosting the governors of all the mega cities of Asia who are um, or governors or mayors of me mega cities in Asia who are fighting the epidemic on the forefront. Um, large um, NGOs that do uh, foreign aid work in surrounding countries countries and globally. So there, that's just a few of the people we hope to attract. Um, we hope to attract, of course, top level scientists. We will definitely have the Nobel Prize winner who discovered HIV because she's my co-chair. And we also hope to showcase some of the great science done in Australia. So I'm hoping that Professor Peter Doherty, uh, um, other Nobel Prize winner who just made a major discovery on the importance of viral specific immunity will be there as well as other preeminent Australians like Michael Kirby, um, previous Chief Justice in Australia. Well I um, not only want a brilliant conference for the five days between July 20th to 25th but I really would love 
to see and, and working hard to see a long lasting legacy from the conference. And that again has been what the conference has historically achieved. What might that legacy look like? Well, I'm hoping there'll be a legacy in Australia for ongoing commitments to controlling HIV, to maintaining our excellence in science and clinical research, maintaining our, um, our open policies towards marginalised groups that have HIV, to be, play leaders in the role of ending stigma and stig discrimination which still exists for people with HIV. I'm hoping we'll have a long lasting legacy of Australia's commitment globally to fighting the epidemic, um, playing a leadership role regionally but also as a very wealthy country making sure we um, maintain our commitments to international um, health. And I think over the last few years many, we, many people have really seriously begun speaking about seeing the end of AIDS and although some people think there may be some hype in that, many people think then that is really a realistic goal. Um, if we can make treatments available to people with HIV, you not only make a major impact on their lives and improving life expectancy, but you can dramatically reduce transmission. So currently 60% of people who need treatment for HIV are receiving it. If we can increase that to 100%, we could have a very substantial impact on the epidemic. Added to that, we need um, to, so that will make a big difference to ultimately see the end of HIV. We will need a vaccine and a cure, and that, um, and that will require heavy um, investment in the science. Yeah, I think it's realistic that we could achieve one day treatment for everyone, get treatment cheap enough, easy enough, and accessible um, to really roll out treatment to everyone who needs it. Treating everyone has a substantial impact on people's own health and also on transmission. Um, will we find a cure? Uh, that's a little harder to, to, to judge. At the moment, people who start anti-HIV drugs need to take them lifelong. And what our goal is with cure research is that perhaps you could treat people for a much shorter period of time, say five years, six years, seven years, and that could have a very big impact on people's lives, not having to take treatment forever, big impact on long-term side effects from the drugs, but more importantly, a really big economic impact because the cost of treating for five years as opposed to 50, 60, 70 years is very, very substantial. So if we can reduce treatment times, we could significantly increase the number of people we treat. So the two go hand in hand. And added to that, um, still a very big interest and very big need to develop a vaccine. We do have lots of ways now to prevent HIV. We've known for years that condoms prevent HIV, but not everyone can use condoms all the time. And over the last 10 years, we've identified a whole lot of other new ways to prevent HIV. So for example, circumcision prevents the risk of acquiring HIV by about 70%. Treating people with HIV reduces their infectiousness. Giving uninfected people anti-HIV drugs, both as drugs or as um, topical gels can also reduce the risk of acquiring HIV. But the best way to really ever prevent and eliminate an infectious disease is through a vaccine.